I do believe it's time to go back to school again. Hello folks and welcome, thank you for joining me for another Mini Painting 102. My series where I try to go over some of the fundamentals, some of the basics of Mini Painting to better equip you with some knowledge to make your life a little bit easier and to take some of the stress out of getting into this amazing hobby. So today we're going to be talking about base coating. Base coating is all about getting a solid foundation onto your miniature upon which you can apply all of your other colours. It's the stage between undercoating and all of the more technical stuff, so it's where you have the most chance to form a good solid foundation and set yourself up for some really good work. Traditional wisdom when it comes to base coating tends to teach us two things. It's generally accepted that the important factors for a good base coat are having an appropriate undercoat colour and having your paints thinned correctly. However, undercoat is actually not as important as it's often made out to be. In fact, I undercoat everything that I paint in black just because it's the colour that I prefer. And even when I'm painting colours like yellow and white, which are traditionally viewed as being very difficult to paint, my black undercoat doesn't create very much of an obstacle at all for these colours. So with that said, obviously the main thing we really want to be looking at is not that undercoat colour, but is that thinning. That's going to be the key to getting as a good finish and understanding how to thin. Now the unfortunate news is this is a bit of a deeper topic than you might think, but we're going to try and boil it down to make it very, very simple after we've explained all of the what and why. Okay, first of all, let's dismiss a rumour, and that is the assertion that your paint should be thinned to the consistency of... Milk. Different brands of paint, different colours of paint that you use, and even different applications, the things that you're going to use them for, will all require varying amounts of thinning in order to get the job done right. So instead of worrying about thinning, let's concentrate on a method instead that helps us overcome this obstacle and keep things simple. We know the application that we're going for when it comes to base coating, so thinning our paints for this purpose is actually really straightforward. We want high coverage to do as few coats as we possibly can, but we want to be really, really careful not to obscure any of the detail on the miniature. So with that in mind, what do we do? So first of all, if you grab yourself a little piece of plastic like this, I've just used a piece of white plastic card here, and it is important that it's plastic because we want the paint to behave on the surface of it in the same sort of way that it behaves on the surface of a miniature. But you could use something like a margarine tub, or there's many things that, you know, are white and plastic, and if the piece of plastic you find isn't white, then you can always spray paint it white. But anyway, if we take that little piece of plastic, we can use it to make a test swatch. To do this, the first thing we're going to want to do is paint some nice full coverage solid black lines all over our piece of plastic. We're going to want to space these apart enough so that not only can we do some extra painting in there, which is what we're going to be doing, but also that we can leave ourselves some little notes around them as well, just with a bit of permanent marker to, you know, show us what that swatch is communicating to us. Now obviously I am using black here because I undercoat everything in black, however black is also really important here and this is why I said a white piece of card as well because that gives us the absolute greatest differential in the colours that are underneath the paint. So it's going to allow us to see if what's underneath the paint is having a dramatic effect on what's going on on top. Okay, so before I start to explain to you what to do with this piece of plastic now that you've got black lines on it, I want to take just a quick second to dismiss all of this talk around thinning ratios. You hear lots of the consistency of milk thing, you hear lots of 2 to 1, you hear lots of 1.5 to 3 and all sorts of crazy bollocks that just is so confusing. So how are we actually going to thin our paints here? Well, what I do is just work that paint down with water to a consistency where I find it comfortable and that it's flowing off of my brush easily. You can test if it's flowing off of your brush easily just by painting with it on your palette each time you add more water to it. So as soon as I feel that that paint is flowing off the brush nicely, as soon as I feel that it's just working nice and easily and fluidly, I stop thinning. I don't go any further than that. So I'm still thinning the minimal amount possible. And that's it. That simple. No calculations, no ratios, no magic formulas. You just feel the paint out, trust your eyes, and go with what feels right to you. Because at the end of the day, every painter is individual. And what you feel is easy to transfer from the brush to the miniature might not feel easy to the next person. And so they may want to thin a little bit more than you. 
So with all of that said, let's return to our swatch now and I can start to tell you what to do with it. Okay, so the colour that I've chosen to first test out here is Nocturna's Reddish Flesh. This is made by Viejo, but it's, you know, a licensed paint for Nocturna. And what I'm going to do here is start painting it over one of the black lines on my swatch, being very careful to make sure that the paint intersects both the white area and the black area. And then once that's dry, I can then go in and start to do a second coat. But this time what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of that first coat exposed. It'll become clear why we're doing that shortly. Okay, so now I'm just going to keep repeating that process and repeating that process, stepping in a little bit and leaving some of the previous coat showing each time until I get all the way to a satisfactory level of coverage. And eventually with this colour, I'm going to reach the conclusion that it takes seven coats to cover well over a black undercoat. That's not going to be very time efficient, so obviously it's easy for us to identify here this is not a good paint to use for base coating. However, if I now repeat this process with, say, Citadel's Bugman's Glow, we can see that despite it being a similar colour, it actually covers to a satisfactory level in about three coats, and what that means is that it's going to take us a lot less time to build this up to use it for the base coat of a skin workup. What this also does is handily helps us dismiss this kind of assertion that a white undercoat versus a black undercoat really matters, or a grey undercoat versus a black undercoat really matters, etc, etc. Because when we look closely at our swatch in the area where we painted Bugman's Glow, we can see that whether it's got the white plastic card underneath it, or the black paint underneath it, it still takes about three coats to reach full coverage, and the colour that you actually get to on top doesn't matter very much. So your undercoat colour is absolutely not super duper important. However, as we're going to find out shortly, the colours that you place underneath some of your layers do matter. So as we start to plan a colour scheme, what we can therefore do is prepare one of these swatches that shows all the colours that we plan to use. So here's the swatch that I made for this Halfling Blood Bowl team that I'm about to start working on. You'll notice that there's a metallic paint here. Now this is the first example of where it's really important to have the right colour underneath it. Metallic paints, just due to the nature of the reflective particles, reflect so much more strongly if there's black underneath them. So it's a really good idea with things like your silvers and golds to make sure that those areas are painted black before you paint the metallic in. But that doesn't necessarily affect what colour you're going to undercoat. Another thing that we really need to be aware of here is that we're talking about satisfactory coverage, not full coverage. And those are different things, because full coverage implies that the colour is completely blocked in with absolutely no transparency left. And with almost all paints, if you're going to thin them back to a good working consistency that won't obscure details, this will take a really, really long time. So what we're instead looking for is for this to be covered to the extent that we've got a nice solid colour there and that we're not seeing any kind of blotchiness, any kind of patchiness, anything that sort of obviously makes the surface look uneven. But as soon as it's smooth and even and solid in colour, we would call that satisfactory coverage. Full coverage does, however, really matter for things like yellows, and this is another case where the colour that's underneath really matters against the colour that's on the top. So whereas things like Citadel's Avalon Sunset or Chimera's Yellow Oxide do provide really good coverage, when we want to paint a really bright yellow, the colours that we're going to be layering over the top of that really don't cover very well. They're very, very transparent. So getting a good solid base in that preparation stage where we're using one of those more dull yellows is really going to help us not have to apply a million layers of one of those really transparent yellows over the top of it in order to get a nice bright yellow finish. So we've taken this extra time here to make this swatch before we've started painting and we don't really want to waste that time so what do we do with that swatch once we're finished with it well there's a couple of options you could just flip it over and make another one on the back of it you could scratch all the paint off of it or you could spray it white again so that it can be used again from scratch on both sides or if you're really feeling brave you could get a number of these swatches together and actually catalog all of your paints so that you've got a little reference guide that you could keep on hand it wouldn't actually take long maybe half a day of just sitting there and doing these coat tests with all of your paints and you'd be able to have something that you could reference back to as often as you like. This is actually something that after making this video, I'm thinking about doing myself. Okay, so after all of that chatting, what can we actually conclude? What conclusions can we draw from our testing? Well, the first thing I think we've demonstrated is that undercoat colour is not as important as maybe one would think to getting your base coats to come together nicely. There are, of course, going to be some corner cases where 
things like yellows or silvers, for example, just need a certain color or a certain type of application underneath them to really help them look good. But as a general rule of thumb, for the majority of our painting that we do, we can just undercoat in whatever colour we're most comfortable with, or is on hand, or that our eyes find easiest to find the details with, that kind of thing. So that's really why I choose black, is because that's the colour that, when I look at it, my eyes find it easiest to see the details on the miniature. I would say that we've also demonstrated that thinning paint doesn't really need to be like a formula. Just thin the paint by feel until you're comfortable to work with it, and what you're really looking for is to just have to apply as few layers as possible to get good solid coverage, at least in the context of base coating. And this is really much more about paint choice than it is about how you thin the paint. We've also found a really good rule of thumb for us to actually make those paint selections. So essentially, if we can cover in sort of between one and three coats, let's say, then we know that that's going to be fairly time efficient. And we also know that we're not going to have to apply so many coats that we're going to obscure a bunch of detail. So that tells us that that paint is ideal for base coating in that kind of application, which is really what's going to help us figure out how to do things nice and quickly and stress-free and to not have too many issues. We've also shown that in some corner cases it does matter what colour is underneath our base coat. However, in those corner case situations we can kind of sometimes just do a little two-step process where we still have all of the miniature undercoated in a certain colour, but then as we're applying our base coats we sort of do a pre-painting on one specific area before we start to lighten it. So say for example if we had a miniature where we wanted to do a yellow part on it, we could pre-paint that with a high coverage dull yellow like Avalon Sunset and then we've only got one small part of that miniature where we have to apply a fair few extra coats of a brighter yellow instead of having to do it on the entire miniature and risk losing all of our detail. So to wrap up and to finish this all off here's a halfling from that Blood Bowl team that I've mentioned and you can see that as I turn the miniature around, I've got good solid coverage on all of these base coats here. This is a nice basis for me to now start looking at shading the miniature down, at highlighting things back up, and generally starting to get something that's going to look really, really pretty in the end. I've got good solid coverage all over, and everything's looking nicely ready to rock. So folks, I hope you liked this video and found it useful. Of course, if you did like it, you can click that like button. You can also subscribe and enable notifications in order to find out when there's more videos coming from me. Of course, if you really love the content and you want to support the creation of it, there is also a Patreon, which you can find a link to in the description, along with all of my social media links. Tears on Patreon start from as little as one American dollar a month, and you'll find some really cool benefits over there. So check it out and have a look. With all of that said, I am now going to get myself out of here but thank you so much for joining me for another 102 video again i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one